Bye, bub. You too. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, March the 5th, 2021. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Wait for some few people to come on and we'll we'll get rolling. <clears throat> All right. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. It's Friday. We made it to Friday. That's a blessing. It's going to be a pretty nice day outside today. No rain in the forecast. That's always a good thing after what we've been through over the last few weeks. So welcome to the Morning Watch, March the 5th. Today's my baby's birthday. She's 23 years old today. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. See, like just yesterday, I was, I was blessed to be my little girl's principal when they were when they were little, and uh, seemed like just yesterday we were all piled up going to school together, and now they're women, grown women. It's crazy. Where's time go, right? Bible says life's like a vapor, like a mist, like a fog. Just burns away when the sun comes out. So, good morning everybody. Kim, Kim, Robin, Rosemary, Glenna, my mom, Terry, Laureen. Good to see everybody. We've got about eight people on so far. So today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 12. So, what's happening here, you can see the tensions are rising. Um, Jesus was doing his thing. He was... Um, advancing his kingdom he was healing he was uh, gathering his own unto him he was talking about uh, heaven and he was talking about um, this this kingdom this kingdom that he was building um, and so let's have a word of prayer together and then we'll jump in to our our, our chapter Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for your for life and blessings. And Lord, we're thankful that in the spite of difficulties and challenges that, uh, that will come our way, we know that you are always there. We know that your presence is a bottomless cup that we can always draw from. We know, Lord, that you are, uh, that you never sleep that you never slumber, that you're always there for us, that you're always uh, as our Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus. Thank you for this for this word that we can learn about you in. Uh, help us to take this these words today with us as we go through our day. Meditate on it, think about it, and let it make us more like your Son. Lord, we love you, and we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. There's Virgil and Peggy. Good morning. All right, Matthew chapter twelve. Let's read this together. As you know, I've been I, I've been reading out of the same translation for uh, several weeks here. This is the New Living Translation. People ask about that sometimes. I don't really have a favorite. Um, I have a few that I, I I don't typically read from, but um, I think it's le I think again this is controversial. I think it's less important what translation you read and that you read the Bible. Okay. Um, again, there are some better ones than others. Um, this one is a—it's called a, a dynamic translation, so um, it's not a word-for-word -word translation, which I like those two: ESV, King James, uh, New King James, New American Standard. I love all those. All right, let's read. It says at about the same time, Jesus was walking through some grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, so they began breaking off some heads of grain and eating them. Now, what's wrong with that, right? Well, the law, these the, the Pharisees were very, very hypersensitive to all of these man-made rituals that they'd created. They believed that you gained God's favor by not doing certain things or doing certain things. That's how you entered into a relationship with God. Checking these boxes, hundreds of them. And one of them was there were very there were so many surrounding the Sabbath, what you could do in this at the Sabbath, what you could not do at the Sabbath. Let's read and see what happens. And it says, but some Pharisees saw them do it and protested. Look, your disciples are breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. 
Jesus said to them, Haven't you read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God, and he and his companions broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. And haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priests on duty in the temple may work on the Sabbath? I tell you, there is one here who is even greater than the temple. Talking about himself. But you would not have condemned my innocent disciples if you knew the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. Mercy, the heart. For the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. So Jesus is saying, yeah, those rituals do exist, but the Son of Man, his authority trumps any of that. Talking about himself. The Son of Man. What is that? What is that? The Son of Man is an expression that's used a lot, especially in the Old Testament, referring to the Messiah, referring to the Son of God, the incarnate Creator. Um, and so here he says, oh, I, we can do this. Verse 9. When Jesus went over to their synagogue, where he noticed a man with a deformed hand, the Pharisees asked Jesus, does the law permit a person to work by healing on the Sabbath? They're just trying to trip him up. They were hoping he would say yes so they could bring charges against him. And he answered, if you had a sheep that fell into the well on a Sabbath, wouldn't you work to pull it out? Of course you would. And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Yes, the law permits a person to do good. On the Sabbath they're just trying to they're just trying to make it difficult then he said to the man hold out your hand so the man held out his hand and it was restored just like the other one then the Pharisees called a meeting to plot how to kill Jesus so you know interestingly I think about how would I handle this right if things were difficult and these people were trying to get stuff on me and trying to trip things up uh i have to be honest i may not have healed this guy i may have just gotten out of there and let things play out the way they were going to play out but jesus says here give me your hand give me your hand i'm going to show you what i can do i'm going to show you who i am i am the son of god the son of man so verse 14 then they plotted to kill him so like I said earlier, tensions are rising. Things are going to become more difficult for Jesus in the days ahead as he is such an affront to them, confronting their sin, completely different from anything that they were doing or living. It says, but Jesus knew what they were planning. Obviously, this, is, this was God's plan. Jesus came to do amazing things, to heal and to love and to serve. But ultimately, he came to die as a sacrifice for us. It says, but Jesus knew what they were planning, verse 15. So he left that area, and many people followed him. He healed all the sick among them, but he warned them not to reveal who he was. Timing. This fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah concerning him. Let's see. So, so this is the Isaiah prophecy. Look at my servant who I am chosen. He is my beloved who pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious, and his name will be the hope of all the world. Amen to that. Jesus is the only hope that we have as humankind. Any question that you have, any question that you might have about life, about uh, heaven, about difficulties, about uh, struggles, about blessings, all of them are rooted in who Jesus was, the gospel. And he says, then a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed and asked, could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah? Yes. 
But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Misunderstood. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintering by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. His own kingdom will not survive. And if I'm empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? They cast out demons too, so they will condemn you for what you have said. But if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and plunder his house. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, Jesus says. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Very important. You can't be a fence straddler when it comes to Jesus. You're either for him or you're against him. Okay? Bottom line. There's no, there's no halfway. So I tell you, every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which will never be forgiven. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven either in this world or in the world to come. A tree is identified by its fruit. Amen. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. Think about the fruit of the Spirit, right? If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Amen to that. You're out of your heart springs the things that you really are. Okay? Jesus is saying that. Uh, a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and the evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on Judgment Day for every idle word you speak. The word you say will neither acquit you nor condemn you. Jesus is concerned about the heart. Always. Always. <clears throat> Verse 38. One day. Some teachers of religious law and Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want to show you miraculous we want you to show us a miraculous sign to prove your authority. But Jesus replied, Only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. But the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. He's telling them already. He's foreshadowing his crucifixion and his death and burial and resurrection. The people of Nineveh will stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it, for they repented of their sins at the preaching of Jonah. Now someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. The Queen of Sheba will also stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it, for she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but you refuse to listen. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I'll return to the person I came from. So if it returns and finds its former home empty, swept and in order, then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. So, and so that person is worse off than before. This will be the experience of this evil generation. Last few verses and we're closing. As Jesus was speaking to the crowd, his mother and brother stood outside asking to speak to him. Someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they want to speak to you. Now know this as we close. These, light, these next few verses sound very harsh, but Jesus is trying to, to get them to understand who is your family? Who is your family? Is it those who are blood related to you? Yes. But the, but the family of God, listen to what it says here. Jesus said, who, who, is, my, who is my mother? Who, who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. This close connection with the family of God, very important to see. So there's so much in here. <clears throat> that I would just encourage you, maybe if you get time today, reread, reread uh, Matthew chapter 12. 
Again, tensions are rising. Jesus is continuing to call out sin. He's continuing to call on people to repent and come to him. He continues to talk about himself. He's telling his disciples, I'm going away. This idea of the sign of Jonah. This idea of, I'm going to, I'm going to be taken away from you. So, remember, a tree is identified by its fruit. So let's be let's be fruit inspectors today, not in other people, but in our own lives. Because as a believer, the Spirit comes to live within you. It's planted in you like a seed. And so what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace. You know the rest. Those are not, those are not uh, optional. They come out, this fruit that grows out of your life because you know Jesus as your Lord. All right. I love you all. Have a great day. There's Kim and Chris joined us. Uh, have a wonderful Friday. Let's pray together, and then I'll see you Monday for Matthew chapter 13. Have a great weekend. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Be with us and guide us in all that we do. We're thankful. Thankful for your gospel. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a great Friday, and uh, we'll see you Monday morning.